I love the idea of owning a classic Porsche 911. The myth, the legend, everything that goes with it appeals greatly. However, being a classic car, there are a couple of problems. The first of which being it's a classic car, so it'll be expensive and bits will break. The second is that it probably isn't as sharp to drive as I think it is in my head. Thankfully, we're in 2018 and now there are loads of companies that can give you the look you want, but with modern mechanicals underneath. Resto modding is big business. People want the cars they lusted after when they were kids, but they don't want the faff of no aircon, low powered motors and other bits that make life a bit difficult. Arguably the most famous resto modders in the world right now are Singer Vehicle Design, but the UK has its fair share of Porsche people. And this is one car from one such company. Meet the Paul Stevens Le Mans Classic Club Sport. It is unsurprisingly based upon a Porsche 911 and it's the brainchild of, would you believe it, a chap called Paul Stevens. Thing is, Stevens has form when it comes to 911 based creations. He's been making these things for a fair few years. Every year, a handful of them go out with smoothed out looks, beefed up mechanicals and tech more suitable for the modern day. The Le Mans Classic Club Sport is a particularly special Paul Stevens car. Only 10 will be built to commemorate 10 runnings of the Le Mans Classic race, which is, let's face it, pretty cool. All 10 will be finished in the shiny, shiny white of this car, with the Le Mans Classic stripes running over the body and Le Mans Classic logos as well. Inside, well, the Le Mans Classic colours continue. The green is everywhere. The carpets, the door pulls, the seat belts, the ring on the steering wheel, even the dials, it's very pretty and very well done. Even the seats have the green and black Le Mans Classic colours done as houndstooth. It is stunning. Now in the back you can either have a luggage trunk just to throw your stuff in or you can have two seats as the good Porsche intended so you can take miniature versions of yourself out for a blast of a Saturday morning. But that is just the pretty, it's what's underneath. That's the important bit. There are too many modifications to list in one video, but here are some highlights. Before it gets to this state, it's a 3.2 litre G-Series 911. Then it's stripped, the body is de-seamed, the sunroof, if the donor car has one, is sealed over many, many hours to make it a full hardtop. Its air-cooled motor is uprated to 3.4 litres and tuned to 300 brake horsepower. And if you get the lightweight spec, it'll weigh as little as 970 kilos. That's 309 brake horsepower per tonne. Now to put that into perspective, that's the same as the new Aston Martin Vantage. 0 to 60 takes 4.4 seconds and it'll tip 170 miles an hour if you're committed. From donor car to finished product takes 2,000 hours, which is, in case you missed it, a lot of hours. Oh, and before you get it, it'll be set up by a Le Mans racer because, well, authenticity is key. The lightweight car, the one what does the numbers, doesn't muck about when it comes to letting grams in. For example, you don't get electric windows, but wind up ones instead. You get one sun visor, Lexan rear windows, single piece seats, and no central locking and much more besides. But if you do want one with say mod cons like electric windows and two sun visors, you can have one of those instead. As I said earlier, there's a lot of romance to owning an old 911. They're cars that hold a lot of weight with a lot of people. Just look at how crazy the classic market is. Even on something as recent as a 993, people fall for their pros and also their cons. So what of taking a shell and rebuilding it to something different? Is it an homage to a dream? Well, then you end up with something like this. Let's go with the obvious stuff first. Holy hell, this thing sounds incredible. And it goes up to 7,800 RPM. <laughs> the peak power is at the top of the rev band. You do have to, and I'm reliably informed by the owner, I should rev the knackers off it. Now, Brembo's on each corner. They are super responsive because there's not too much car to stop. They don't need to be massive. The pedal is pretty easy to control. You can nose it into a corner, drive it like a proper 911, trail brake in, slow in really fast out and oh boy the motor is it revs so quickly and so freely 
just a tiny little tiny little flex of your toe and there's the response it's silky silky creamy creamy smooth the last classic 911 i drove was from the 70s and the owner said it's all right there are some gears in there somewhere the man from Weissach told me they were there the gearbox was shall we say vague this one is not it's direct it's still it's quite a long throw to it it's very old school, but again, it's a car celebrating the Le Mans Classic, so you expect a fairly long gear action. The steering is unassisted. Now, at low speeds, that means you get an arm workout. No bad thing. I need one. I'm a weakling. At high speed, however, it's light, it's direct, it's smooth. You can feel absolutely everything through your fingertips. You know when people bang on about that Porsche steering feel? That's what this has got. And it's got so much grip as well. You, you don't feel it start to twitch or to quiver. If you get one of the, the Paul Stevens Auto Art cars, you can daily it, you can use it as your as your day-to-day, -day. but cars with this setup, this has been set up for the Saturday morning blast, for the weekends away with the boys going and playing on some country roads on a mountain somewhere. If you don't know what you're doing, you might have a bit of difficulty with this because the controls might be a bit heavy or a bit difficult. Now, my mum could get in a 911 and happily pass it to the shops, but that means it's diluted for everyone else. This, this is for the people that get it, the people that go, I want that car, the one with the noise, with the feel, the one where I'm a little bit tired when I get out of it after a hard drive because, man, I know I've put the effort in. Now, here's the rub. Making people a perfect 911 can take many different forms. Look at Singer. The Singer style is bold, with big arches, stance, and it's, well, distinct. You know by looking at one of Singer's cars that it's not a regular Neun Alpha. What about Paul Stevens' cars? This Le Mans has Le Mans written on it, so it's obviously not a normal car, but the other stuff... If you walked by it, you'd think it was a well-kept old Porsche. It's the close-up details that give it away. I really dig the subtlety of this car. Now, I don't mean the noise, because that's definitely not subtle, or the white paint, because that's also not subtle, but the fact that anyone walking in the street could see it and think, oh, that's a nice old Porsche 911. That's a nice car, isn't it? But those who know what they're looking for, you can see, you can see those tiny little differences between the original and this kind of remade, reborn car. The seams, for example, vents where there shouldn't be vents, little things like that, headlamps, that kind of thing. And you appreciate the effort that's gone into it just to realise what it is, and it makes it feel just that little bit more special. Twenty eighteen appears to be basically the year of the resto modders. If there was a car in your past that you once liked, there is someone making a new, improved, and shiny version of it. Thing is, Paul Stevens has been doing this for years, and the cars, the attention to detail is staggering. The fact that everything lines up, the fact that everything has to be just so, the power that's been put into this isn't too much, it isn't too little. It's just right for the car. The setup, the balance. This thing is, it's a staggering piece of engineering. It's a truly impressive car. And you know what? It's done by one guy who knows what he likes. And he reckons you'll like it too. I know I do.